Yeah, welcome back to Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. It's a 10 o'clock block uh, here on a given Thursday with Tom Yamachika talking tax with Tom. Um, today we're talking about taxes in the tank, hidden charges at the pump. What an exciting topic, Tom. And it's a great, it's a great way to frame our conversation. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me, Jay. Um, it's uh, uh, another taxing topic. And this one is uh, regarding the, uh, you know, dreading the day when we got to go to the gas station and fill up at the pump uh, between, you know, COVID-19, Russia versus Ukraine, and other economic factors, uh, we are really feeling the pain. Uh, you know, perhaps less uh, here than some places on the mainland, but we are feeling the pain here. The, you know, the gas prices are over $5 a gallon. Uh, and, and that was, I think, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> it's, it's, it's gone higher since then. Uh, well, let's, let's, so what, what is the government taking out of it? I mean, what, what has the government got to do um, with the, that increase? How, how is the government affecting that increase? Oh, there's lots of ways. Uh, there are a lot of different taxes uh, that go into the price at the pump. We, we start with the, uh, with the feds. Uh, they have a gas tax of 18.4 cents. Okay. But that's, that's just for starters. Then we get into the stuff that we impose. 18.4 cents on a gallon? Yes. Oh, -ho. okay. And that's and and as we will see, that's peanuts compared to uh, what else you know what what else we are whacking on it. Um, we have a state fuel tax of sixteen cents per gallon, uh, and then there's a county fuel tax. Uh, the cheapest county fuel tax is here in Honolulu at sixteen and a half. That's another sixteen, okay, and it goes up to twenty four cents per gallon on Maui. So the, the other two counties are kind of somewhere in between. Uh, then there's a component called the barrel tax, uh, which is imposed on any imported uh, petroleum product or, uh, and, or and other fuels. Uh, and its official name uh, is the Environmental Response Energy and Food Security Tax. What, what food security has to do with the price of the pump, I don't know, but you know, that's what it is. We should spend a little time on that later in the show. Yep. Um, it, uh, this is one of the taxes that kind of went up, uh, you know, heartily over the years. It started off as, as a nickel per gallon. I mean, I'm sorry, nickel per barrel. Now, barrel is one uh, forty uh, second of a gallon. Okay. Uh, and in, you know, the short period of time that we've had the barrel tax, it went up from five cents per barrel to a dollar five per barrel. So an increase of 21 X, and it now works out to two and a half cents per gallon. Okay, it's small now, but there's other, uh, you know, interesting um, and, and, you know, perhaps uh, uh, foreboding uh, sites on the horizon. Are you, are, you what, done, are you done listing all the taxes on the barrel? No, not, not at all. Okay. And then, of course, there's our GET, the, the general excise tax at 4% of the sales price, uh, which is added on, on, onto which is added another half percent in all counties other than Maui. So if we're talking about uh, five uh, cents as, as, you know, if, I'm sorry, $5 a gallon as an example, that's, that's what, you know, that, that's what I've paid recently. Uh, that adds another 22 and a half cents per gallon. Okay. So of all the state taxes that I've mentioned, I, I add um, uh, state fuel tax of 16 cents, Honolulu County fuel tax of 16 and a half, uh, barrel tax of two and a half, and GET at 22.5. That brings us to 57 and a half cents per gallon so far. Well, if you add the uh, gross excise on top of that, aren't you tax taxing the tax? Oh yeah, well of course you are. Um, I think there's an exemption for certain of the taxes, but uh, it's you know the effect is, is is very minor, if any. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. I mean, I'm, I like to uh, ask questions that I think somebody out there in, in viewer land would be interested in, and that is, why 
Why is gasoline such a target? It's like festooned with taxes. What, what makes it such a magnetic commodity that everyone should be taxing it this way? What happened here? Uh, I think I think the you know part of the part of the issue is that people got to buy it. You know, if if uh, uh, you know if you want to go around anywhere in this state, you got to have wheels, and um, so so there there's a lot of um, uh, yeah. Well, it's easy to collect. It's easy to so collect. Because yeah. the guy at the pump who sells it to you, he's collecting the five dollars. And he's paying these various taxes. It's a snap for the government. The government gets one hundred percent collection. It's very easy for them. They they know who the um, uh, the automobile deal uh, the the gas dealers are. They know who the manufacturers are. They know who the importers are. So it's 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 pretty easy. There's not a a, a huge universe of people from whom they have to collect tax. Okay, now you scared us all by saying this was not the end of it. Let's hear the bad news, Tom. Well, let's 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 start with um, uh, the carbon tax. Okay. Uh, at our legislature, there is a set of people, um, and it, you know, it, there's you know, more or less depending on you know depending on the legislative season, uh, who think that the price at the pump needs to be raised big time. Uh, and the reason for that is to combat uh, the the environmental threat posed by burning fossil fuels. So, uh, in the past several legislative sessions, there have been uh, carbon tax proposals, supposedly to pay for the societal costs of pollution, global warming, and so forth. Now, in, in the past session. Uh, our bill number was House Bill 2278. Uh, and the proposal in that bill was to change the barrel tax, which started, you know, which is now dollar five, to a minimum of five dollars and twenty-seven cents, uh, increasing in phases to uh, thirty-three dollars and sixteen cents per barrel when fully phased in. Okay, and what that translates to is 12 and a half cents per gallon initially and 79 cents a gallon when fully phased in. So that would change the state and county tax on a gallon of gas from 57 and a half cents to $1.34 a gallon if adopted and fully phased in at least. Well, now, is it adopted? What's the status of that, that change? It, it, it died last session. But that okay. means that somebody else will raise it next session. That, that, that's absolutely right. Um, there are, of course, those who don't think an increase of this magnitude is enough. Uh, the carbon tax proposed by House Bill 2278 um, starts off at, uh, you know, if you use the conversion factors on the government's websites, uh, about $14 per metric ton of carbon dioxide uh, emitted and increased to about $89 per metric ton. Okay. Um, and again, this is on met a, a metric ton uh, of carbon dioxide gas emitted by uh, burning gasoline. And you can, you can um, uh, calculate that. Yeah. The various groups have suggested that a higher tax would be absolutely required to drive compliance with the state's net zero emissions goal by 2045. Now, 2045 is not that far away. No. And um, we are, you know, making some progress, but, uh, you know, at, at, at the current pace, we're, there's no way we're going to hit, uh, you know, net zero emissions by 2045. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, there are people, I think, who have proposed... Um, Raising the carbon tax, you know, if it's once it's adopted, you know, to as much as one hundred fifty dollars per metric ton. I don't think anybody has uh, a carbon tax of that magnitude yet, but uh, you know. So this is intended to be the the stick, um, as opposed to the carrot. 
uh, that forces us to go faster. Well, it forces us to stop buying gas. That's what it's going to do. And presumably go to renewables and electric vehicles in this case. Right. You know what, what I don't get, and I hope this is uh, something that doesn't disrupt the, you know, your train of thought, but um, we, we have a situation now globally where the price of oil is you know, dramatically increasing. And call it the Putin tax, call it the Ukraine tax, um, call it the ruble tax, but it's having an effect on the price of gas for cars everywhere. And it's dramatic. In fact, in a lot of places, it's more dramatic than it is in, in Hawaii. So, um, and my guess is that's going to continue. The whole affair in Ukraine, the whole thing with Putin, is that he is he's the kind of guy like Trump that, that drills down, keeps doing it and doing it and doing it, however, you know, uh, objectionable it is. He's a, persist um, he's a persistent kind of guy. Persistent kind of guy. Thank you very much. Um, and so, uh, you know, the war in Ukraine is going to continue. The problem with grain going to developing countries uh, will continue and people will starve. Um, the problem uh, with the economy in Europe, you know, will continue. And the problem with gas prices and fuel prices from Gazprom, you know, the, um, you know, the gas gas. I mean, what do you call it? liquid natural gas and all that, that will continue. So what, what I'm concerned about is that these guys in the, in the Hawaii government want to keep increasing um, by these dramatic steps, carbon tax or otherwise, while the price of gas is going up, they're really going to make it hard for the average Joe to get around. Am I right? Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, from the point of view from some people, uh, like the environmentalists, for example, that's exactly where we need to go. Just, you know, we we want people to stop driving. We want you want them to, to, you know, go to that bike store down the street and pick up a bike. Well, at the same time, you know, you talked about the barrel tax and talked about, you know, the original purpose of the barrel tax was to, um, you know, de incentivize gas, and then take the 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 product of the taxes, take the taxes collected and somehow apply them to uh, clean energy. That was the original purpose of the barrel tax. Well, no, uh, the, barrel, the barrel tax was, was originally there to create a, 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 a fund uh, to, to combat oil spills if one should happen here. Oh, that was okay. that was that was like way, way, way long time ago. Now you're older and... than I am, so you can talk like that. <laughs> I, I I don't know about the age thing, but uh, but I, but I do go into Foodland and they you know and they, and they click that senior discount button with, without me asking, so that that depresses me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for you. So anyway, I mean, more recently, the whole thing with barrel taxes, we got to collect the money so we can apply it toward you know environmental action measures uh, and and food security. Well, I, you know, the food security thing is really interesting. Because what, what I get out of that is it, is it goes, am I right, into um, a fund that does not contribute to clean energy, particularly, and does not contribute to uh, food security either. So there, what, there's, there's, what are we there's, achieving? Yeah, there are, there are um, a number of earmarks on the barrel tax. It's, it's been kind of a favorite target of lawmakers. Um, so Everybody yeah. wants a piece of it. Yeah, like the Department of Land and Natural Resources has a couple of funds that it gets. There is, in fact, a food security fund uh, that the barrel tax feeds, which is, you know, and, and that, that's why it got its name, you know, extended to food security tax. Um, environmental response is when it started. Energy is, you know, kind of, uh, I, I suppose, an all-encompassing all name. And then, well, the thing is, it went from five cents, as you said, to a dollar five. Presumably, you know, most or all of that should have gone to the purpose that was most prominent, that is uh, developing renewable energy. But I don't think much of it goes to renewable energy. In fact, I don't think much of it goes to food security either. I think it goes uh, to wherever they want to put it in a given year. It seems like it changes all the time, and the legislature sees it as a, a sort of an open target. And take, yeah, take no, I, right now, I think half of it goes to the general fund. Mm -hmm. 
and then and then half of it is split into various you know special pots of money including um, the department of transportation for roads or something um or uh, well they get the regular of... gas tax yeah they get this on top yeah right tax. yeah the, the department of transportation gets the regular gas tax uh, at uh, 16 cents um the they, there are county departments of transportation and they get the you know the 16 and a half to 24 um you know that's that's their piece and and of course the state general fund also gets the get and and the counties get um uh pieces of the half percent surcharge if they if they adopted it i see fragmentation all around us here today on this um you know we talked about it last week i mean that you you know who knows where it goes who knows where is the comprehensive plan who is in charge of these various uh, separate taxes and separate special funds supposed to, you know, help clean energy or whatever food security? Um, I, you know, I, I think I think it really needs um, some. Leadership. Well, I mean that that's that that's why we at the foundation have been reeling against special funds all this time because, uh, you know, there, there are so many special funds. There are thousands of them now, and and you know if. Uh, you you task one person with the you know, with the task of you know, wait, how how much money does the state have? They won't be able to 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 give you that answer. There's no way, um, because you know even for the state departments that are supposed to monitor such things, uh, like budget and finance, you know they're supposed to get a report. The legislature is supposed to get a report. And not all of the other executive, not all of the executive departments uh, follow that law. Ooh, I forgot. Or ooh, um, oh, uh, you, you're right. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll do it. But, next but, time. but this ten foot tall conclusion you have to make is that there's nobody coordinating the expenditures from this various these various funds, which seem to be directed at the same purpose. But there's no, you know, what do they all send a check to a central place? No, they don't do that. They spend it in little pieces, and there's no plan at, at all. So. Query. I mean, I I don't want to take you too far off the track, but what what is a good way to do this? I mean, to have what four or five taxes or more on on a barrel, uh, plus the gross excise tax. Isn't there a better way to tax a gallon or a barrel of gas? Isn't isn't it a better way to tax it and then and then apply it? Well, actually, I would just apply it to the general fund because the existence. You know, you you complain that the existence of a special fund, um, you know, allows for money to accumulate when it shouldn't. But the, the flip That's side. That's absolutely that, right. But but the, the flip side of that is the existence of a special fund doesn't allow you to spend what you need to spend in order to achieve a stated legislative goal. So well, I mean, I, if, I don't if... want the spending to be limited by the special fund either. I, if if the if the government wants to do something in the environment, let them do it and take the cost out of the out of the general fund. Same yeah, yeah, that's that's energy. how it's supposed to work. Yeah, I mean, w w all of our money is supposed to go to go to one general fund. Uh, the legislature has its power of appropriation, and they are accountable to the people because they got to go face the electors every you know every two or four years, as the case may be, including this one, where everybody has to you know, go face the electors. So yeah, there's some accountability. Uh, I, I mean, we'd rather have that, I think, than you know, some department head who uh, gets appointed and uh, and you know, stays around for four years or eight years, and and really is accountable to nobody except the governor, really. Yeah. So that 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 person um, may not spend anything; just let it sit there, which, which and, is and that's, cheating, that's, cheating that's, the that's, taxpayers. That that's that's what's happened in some cases. Yeah. So, let's back including back to the to... Department of Transportation. Now, funny that we mentioned the Department of Transportation because um, they are also uh, planning uh, another attack on those of us who go to the pump. It's called the road usage charge. Um, if you if you want to see what that is, uh, there's actually a website called hiruc.org for Hawaii road usage charge. It's maintained by the Department of Transportation, and what they want to do is they want to they want to replace um, some of the 
some of the taxes that are that are in the, in the pump currently uh, with a road usage charge. And, and the way that would work is, is like, especially for electric vehicles, uh, you know, alternative fuel vehicles and stuff like that, they don't pay the gas tax now or they pay, they pay far less of it, okay? Um, and, and the Department of Transportation is concerned that they're not getting their share of gas taxes, which, which they spend, by the way, um, out of the uh, electric vehicle and alternative fuel vehicle uh, users. So well, if, I, if I was an ordinary person, an ordinary person on Bishop Street, and you asked me where the road usage charge would go, I would say, well, it sure doesn't go to the potholes. It it doesn't go to keeping, the, you know, maintaining the infrastructure. I can't imagine where it goes because we're losing the war on potholes all over the place. So where does the road usage charge go? Well, um, we don't know um, because we haven't adopted it yet. Uh, in in prior administrations. Um, the you know Department of Transportation has trotted out you know lists of you know highway improvements that they want to do uh, like um, you know highway widening or additional lanes here or an additional bypass there um, and 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 they and they in some years have said well look you know we don't have the money uh, so all these new projects are on ice we're not doing them. Uh, we we only have funds to maintain what we got, so we'll maintain what we got. You know, questionable that that, that may be, um, and we're not doing anything new. So, uh, with a road with a road usage charge, they're thinking, well, we can do some you know some stuff that's new. Now, the idea uh, behind the road usage charge was that it was supposed to replace the gas tax. Okay, but I'm not, but I'm not so sure, because in this past legislative session. They they proposed a road usage charge on electric vehicles that would not replace the gas tax. It would have been it would have been imposed in 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 lieu of uh, you know vehicle reg, the, the vehicle registration fee. And and so you know I was jumping up and down and I was saying what the hell's going on here, because because you guys promised that you're going to do this in lieu of the fuel tax. And. Um, and then they kind of, you know, hemmed and hawed and, well, you know, uh, these these electric vehicles uh, are not paying the fuel tax anyway. So, you know, what's the difference? But, you know, it sounds like we have a, a really serious government culture problem here. Is that every department wants to feather its own nest. Every department wants to gather its rosebuds while ye may. Every every department wants to have a special fund and ample reserves to do what it might come up with because it doesn't trust the executive to give it money out of at, or the legislature to give it money out out of the general fund. So they're all like like holding it close to the vest. It's it's almost com it is it's competitive among the departments. This is oh, a very serious, much so a serious attitude problem a, a culture point. Uh, in Hawaii state government, is this? Yeah, is it's this always been like that. that. Does it exist in other states? Uh, I mean, to a greater or lesser degree, perhaps. But I think you know, in in our state, it's um, blown way out of proportion. I mean, the 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 amount of special funds we have is astounding. Hmm. So this will this will result presumably in a road a road use tax on top of all the other taxes that the Department of Transportation gets. Yeah, I mean, like for an example, for an example, you know, I was uh, in the uh, Hawaii Road Usage Charge Advisory Committee that the Department of Transportation set up. Just, you know, I just, just basically joined so I could see what was going on. And and one of the you know the simulations they did was to say, okay, well, uh, you know, give all of, all of us your your uh, car data, and then we'll calculate how much road usage charge you would have to pay or not pay. And so and so I did. Okay, fine. So here you know here you go. And I, I drive a hybrid. Okay. Um. And so they and so they come come back with a a, a printout saying that that I'd be required to pay like you know eighty five dollars more. Because you drive a hybrid. 
because they drive a hybrid. Well, wait a minute. Isn't a hybrid attractive from a policy point of view, from an environmental policy point of view? Why would they tax you extra for a hybrid? Because they don't pay enough fuel tax. Oh, now I got it. So one tax is supposed to incentivize you to buy a hybrid, and the other tax is supposed to de incentivize to buy you to buy a hybrid. So the whole thing neutralizes itself and winds up at zero. Yeah, you have yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's that's another, you know, very interesting feature about the taxes that are being proposed. They're at cross purposes, right? Yeah. You, you have you have the car the the environmentalists who want the carbon tax. And they're thinking this road usage charge is a horrible idea. And then you have the the people in the Department of Transportation, they're pushing road usage charge to to you know have a more equitable distribution of costs among the people who are using the highways and byways. You know, it strikes me that, uh, that that the governor should be handling this and coordinating. All those agencies work for him or her. Um, all those agencies should be coordinated, and they are clearly not. Yeah, they're fighting each other. <laughs> Great. Well, on, on top of this, I mean, lest we forget, we, we're going to have a serious increase um, in gas. Um, because of what's going on in Ukraine. It's going to continue. It's going to get worse. I mean, every day I look at the New York Times, the Washington Post, and it tells me the war is still going on. And it's not going to get settled anytime soon. And Mr. Putin is relentless. Um, and so, um, you know, the question I put to you is, if we, if we keep on paying more at the pump between these gas taxes, various gas taxes, and the price of oil, coming into the state. And the GET. And the GET, right, percentage of that. Where, <clears throat> where, where does that take us in terms of our economy? Well, I, I mean, I, I really want to say the economy will tank, right? But, <laughs> I know you But that would be horrible. Uh, I'm sorry you didn't say that. I'm, yeah. <laughs> it was implicit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but, but no, there, there are... Um, you know, uh, ex the, these are what we call market externalities, right? I mean, they are uh, independent of how the market works. So, you know, irrespective of supply and demand, you know, irrespective of the normal market forces, there, there are all these taxes you know, to to advance social policy. So, um, you know, is it a good idea? Uh, you know, there are various viewpoints on that. Uh, you know, we we just we just want to see. A system with transparency um, that that uh, you know people know uh, how much is how much taxes are, are going into that gallon of gas, and and they are you know and and the people who uh, make those determinations are accountable to the people because they should be. I think you're being too kind. Really, I, I think somebody up there, the executive or maybe some leader in the legislature. To coordinate these things and clean it up, so we not only know, but it's good policy. You know, it advances the stated policy of the state of Hawaii. We're not doing that. Yeah, uh, we're not doing that. I mean, why why stir up trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially in an election year, right? Exactly. <laughs> so that those that's that's the problem we've got. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't you make a closing statement, Tom? Uh, why don't you address your statement to the Hawaii uh, legislature and tell them what they need to do? Uh, I guess it would be next year, starting January. Yeah, no, I mean, what we really want to see is uh, more transparency in this, you know, how much you pay at the pump deal. So, you know, enough of these uh, multifarious taxes. Let's do just one tax if you want to do one tax. Uh, and Explain what it is so people understand it, uh, and uh, and then stop hiding stuff, because uh, that's that's bad policy to hide stuff. Yeah, and if you want to incentivize electric vehicles, then do that. <laughs> don't give me a an ambiguous message that whether you like them or don't, do that. Give me a tax credit on electric vehicles, and don't punish Tom. It's not fair. <laughs>
Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure to be here. Thank you and aloha. Aloha.